I think that's 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 huge, man. And like a, a lot of things need to abide by that. Right, and uh, um, Andy, a, a quick question on the uh, the squats. Okay, so for people that go to Planet Fitness, Andy, and that's their gym because that's all they can mm-hmm. afford. You know, they don't have free weights over there. They got the squat rack, but it's that squat uh, squat rack that's like, you know, that's just one, and it just attached. Mm-hmm. It's one of those bars where you can go up and down on it, stuck to the to the squat rack. Uh, would you say doing squats like that, and you know, you put the bench underneath, so when you squat down, you, as soon as your butt hits the the bench, that's one, and you go up. Uh, do you think that doing squats like that, do you think that's effective, or do you think, honestly, it's better to do squats where you have a free weight, free rack, and then you could actually take a couple steps back, and you could actually go down like how we usually did um, in the backyards back in the, in, in, in the day, Andy? Which way do you think is much more effective to do squats, or do you just think doing squats in general in those two ways is effective? Uh, so one thing I I've learned. Um, but first off, very 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 good question, man. But one thing that I've learned um, in this in, in my field of fitness is that it depends. It depends on the the age of the individual. Some if the individuals are typically older, they already have a lack of range of motion. Maybe the, uh, the Smith machine. That's the one that you were referring to in the first one. The Smith machine mm-hmm. might be a better better fit. At the end of the day, though, I I would say that I would I would like for somebody to to try to do a squat on their own power because with the Smith machine, it's kind of it 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 forces you in the quote unquote proper position, so you're not activating your core to get into that position. Does that make sense? Because it's oh, like, it, it's, it's fixed. It's fixed to be okay. You're going up and down. Instead of free weight, in which you have to force yourself to make sure that you're not leaning too far forward, too far back. So now your core is engaged. Um, so I would go to that one before the Smith machine, but again, it do it all depends on the individual. As but to go a little bit deeper into your question, because you said if they are Planet Fitness, true Planet Fitness don't they they're not real popular when it comes to load. But what I would say individuals could do, uh, for the most part, is one. If they're not an avid squatter, get good at squatting body weight because I think, again, you don't want to add load to a body that can't move properly. So you want to make sure that first Mm -hmm. master body weight squats. Once your body weight squats are good, uh, from that point on, try to use, I think they have kettlebells. So you could do a goblet squat. What a goblet squat is, you hold the uh, either a kettlebell or a dumbbell um, in front of you so it's going to be front loaded, and then you knock out squats that way. Um, I think the heaviest dumbbells quick, that they have at Planet Fitness is like 50, right? Quick quick question, Andy. Oh, 50, 50, oh, 50, yeah, 50. Uh, quick question. Okay. For the people that don't know what body weight, what body weight, when you said lift body weight, you mean like that, their actual body weight, right? That is, that is, yeah, that is correct. So like with no no, no additional load, um, just, you know, the body that God gave them, you know, typically what you could do is you, uh, you reach your, your arms straight out in front of you, so that's going to be kind of like a counterbalance. So that's going to help you out a little bit. So you uh, place your arms down in front of you, uh, feet about shoulder width apart. Um, you want to send your hips back first. So you don't want to just squat, uh, just drop straight down. So your knees touching your toes. You want to make sure that you send your hips back first, and then squat as low as you can. Uh, typically, they're, they're doing uh, doing a little bit of research on this lately. Some people say uh, you always want to go. Uh, as low as you can uh they call it ass to grass atg <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, that's not that's mm-hmm. not that important that's not that important i would say if you could get down to parallel that's fine too so typically robin how you said putting the bench under you is great because that teaches again that teaches mechanics but i think the issue with the boss squat sometimes people sometimes what people will do is when they sit down when they come down to the to the to the bench they sit down and relax. You don't want to sit down and relax. So if you're gonna use a if you're gonna use a, a bench, you just use it as a marker. So when you come down to the bench, you want to sit back, stay actively engaged, tap the box, but still be engaged and then explode up. And then as you get better and better at that, lower the box a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, until to the point where you're able to do a, a squat at ninety degrees and then even beyond that as well. Um, but yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I do it that way because, you know, I'm obviously a Planet Fitness member, so I got to do the best that I can. And so I obviously feel – I still feel the squats because, yeah, Andy, I pop up really quick. 
So I, I, you know, people, I have seen people sit down. <laughs> you don't want to, you want to engage, you want to, you want to keep going. That engagement in low rest time, it really helps the body out if you're weightlifting because you, you want to get the results. You want to get the results. You can't, you can't, you can't rest too long. So Andy, you just, uh, maybe you just to, to this, uh, like, so Andy, some people listening to this, episode right now they they're uh they're like okay i want to get healthy but i don't necessarily care for the the model type body the heavy yeah. six pack the nice back all shredded and all that they don't care for, for, for that so Andy, my question to you is what does healthy look like inside out and does does for a man and for a woman to, to be healthy do they do they necessarily need a flat stomach or do they need a six pack or do they have to be ripped what do you uh um what are your thoughts on that, kid? Another great question. Um no. To be honest, man, like that was a real good question. And I think at the end of the day, man, you have to love yourself, man, and you have to be happy with yourself. So I I there's mm-hmm. some individuals typically when they when they try to make that 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 fitness journey, that fitness transformation typically what starts it is that they're not happy with the body that they're currently in. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they, they they go on that journey to, to achieve the body that they want. Um, now in terms of like the, the body that you described, the six pack, the, the shredded back, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit propaganda. It's what it's just one of those things that we've kind of been force fed to, to believe that these are the nice bodies. Um, and Mm -hmm. I, I think like sometimes, it could be misleading, you know. We we live in uh we live in a world where it's like, uh, it's not not only say Instagram, but it's it's there, yeah, like, yeah, Joe, like social, social media. media, social media, and so. Huge. But the thing is, we we can't believe what's on social media because, uh, you know, not not to not to throw this out there, but I do dabble in photography, uh, and I know how Photoshop works. So if you see an image on Photoshop, you can kind of <laughs> like you can't believe that's how they look like. They could probably. <laughs> have critiqued their body a little bit. And I, there, there, there have been in, uh, uh, instances where there was like a, a popular fitness influencer who actually did that. He he photoshopped six pack abs on his photos, uh-huh. you know, and it's like, and but he was selling a lot before he got caught. You know, he, he, he got a lot of individuals, like he tricked a lot of individuals thinking that he, he knew his stuff about fitness when he really did it. And so it's just one of those things where I think you want to achieve happiness, man. And um, ultimately, for me, I feel like what an individual should, should strive for, again, is to move move and to move well. And they will grow to appreciate their body in the long run. You know, just, just achieve being the best version of yourself inside and out, and you'll get there. You know, it's, it's, it's not in the six-packs. It's not in... Uh, the shredded back, the the, the vascularity mm-hmm. in your in your in your quads or your calves, it's it's not there, man. You know, it's just one of those things where I want to be the strongest version that I possibly get, could be, um, and that will lead to your happiness, man. Right, right. So you're basically saying that you got men with dad bods or women that are a little, you know, just a little bit hefty, but they can do all the same workouts that that somebody smaller can do. They should still be proud of themselves, and they should still be happy, and and feel like they are healthy. Is that what you're basically saying, Andy? Yeah, and it, it, long story short, mm-hmm. yeah, man. My thing is, my thing is the 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 goal is to be the best version of yourself. You get what I'm saying? And that's yeah. that that oh, exceeds yeah. even fitness. You get what I'm saying? That exceeds right. fitness. So it's it's one of those things where if, if an individual is constantly striving, and, and it. And my thing is, we so we call it the, we call it the dad bod. But I think what we, we what we should do is we we should redefine what a dad bod looks like. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And it's uh, just like just make it uh-huh, that right. while, while 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 striving to to get to this best version of yourself and and just you know being a better you every single day. Mhm. True. True. It, it's uh it's crazy, Andy. That's what I'm saying. When I see a lot of videos on. YouTube on on and guys that are basically you know health gurus they just look you see all these people and they're all ripped. Um, everybody that works out behind them they're already ripped. You don't see not a single person that has like just a normal average body. And now me just watching that television and I, and I'm just looking at those people and I'm just like yo damn I, I 
I don't have that body at all, you know, and it'd be making you uh, feel bad. But, yeah, Andy, everything you say, it's just feeling right within yourself. And then that also helps you gain confidence, like what I was saying in the uh, the previous episode. So, yeah, definitely, you're definitely right um, about uh, about that, Andy. Really appreciate it. So, then comes to my uh, my next question. So, Andy, do you think do you think personal trainers are needed, sir? Or do you feel like people can figure this thing, just these things out on their own with a health guru guy like like you, sir? Because <laughs> I know. Um, can somebody go ahead? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you, man. I think with all the information that we have nowadays, um, it, it, mm-hmm. it, is possible, it is possible for an individual to get there on their own. Typically, a lot of uh, there's, there's, there have been a lot of individuals who who transform and change their bodies with no, by themselves. Um, but you could, I would say that you could only get so far by yourself. Sometimes um, it's sure. good to have somebody to it's good somebody to have somebody on the outside looking in um, who are who knows where you where where you're going already because they already been through it and they can kind of guide you a little bit better by you um, going through it on your own. Um, case in point, uh, I recently I, I did a show um, in December last year, mm-hmm. and um, in, the, in the preparation of that show, could I have could I have done it on my own? Yeah, I could have. Um, there was a lot of contestants. There was a lot of uh, fellow con- contestants that um, prepared on their own, right? But I decided to get to get a coach because again, it's just one of those things where I've never. I never had a like a trainer in my life. I had coaches in high school, yeah, but I never had a trainer um, in my life because again, I I put that on my own shoulders. But and mm-hmm. having a coach and having a trainer guide me through my competition, guide through my comp- co- uh, competition prep. He really helped me understand a few things that even though I've been training for years, he opened my eyes to a lot of new things. All right, so we hit, like so, small little example was like just understanding the importance of uh, or like just like I like isometrics. So it was it was a physique show, so kind of in the realm of bodybuilding. And so what an isometric is is when you are contracting the muscle, but it's the there's no movement in the limbs. So like typical example would be like planks, um, but for for the exercise that he taught me was it was like a bicep curl. So he said, "What we're gonna do is mm-hmm. we're gonna do ten, we're gonna do ten full curls, and then you're gonna bring your mm-hmm. arm down while holding the dumbbell to 90 degrees, and you're gonna hold it there for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna do five curls, and then you're gonna do that again. You're gonna hold it for five seconds at 90 degrees, right? And that was a killer. I mean, it's just, but it's just one of those things where I didn't really understand at the time how to implement isometrics in, into my routine until I was introduced to that idea by my coach. So I think it's right. th- there's levels." I think it, it, I, I honestly do believe an individual should start on their own. I don't think, I don't think an individual, if, if so many individuals feel like, okay, I never trained in my life, I'm going to go get a personal trainer, I'm going to go get a coach, that's cool. But I feel like, yo, do what you can to the best of your abilities on your own first and then reach out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and Andy. So that's, that's uh, what I'm saying. Okay, and um, and Andy, and for somebody who's new, basically like what you're saying, if they're looking for a personal trainer, what are the what are the uh the qualities that they should look for, and what should they uh um avoid, you know, so they can make the right decision on the personal trainer? You know that there's some out there, all they want is money, and they don't necessarily care about their clientele. How can you look right through them and 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 tell what would you be looking for, Andy, if you were looking for a personal trainer like the coach that you picked what how did you how did you um what was your uh your your level of expectation for him how did you dissect this uh this coach and you were and you were like okay this is the guy that i'm going with what 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 should a normal person or an average person look for andy when they're looking when they're in search of a personal trainer yeah so uh again great question um but uh what i would say what i would say to that man is um so this is this kind of ties in a little bit to the previous question, and when you asked about the individuals feel bad as they don't.